sprite animation is one of the coolest animation disciplines out there. I mean, how cool is it to be able to see some of these crazy battles between some of your favorite characters? Now, I know a lot of you guys tend to watch these kind of animations for the entertainment value, but I'm sure there's a select few of you who are wondering, how do you make sprite animations? And can I possibly make my own sprite animations? And I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can and it is my hope and my aim through my tutorial series to show you from start to finish how to create your very first sprite animation. Hey, I'm Stride and Spark, artist, animator, storyteller. Over here, I tend to work on the mediums of drawing videos, animation, whether it's 2D animation or sprite animation. But as of right now, we're gonna go ahead and dive into showing you guys how to create your own sprite animations. Now, I know there's a lot of sprite animation tutorials out there, but I think what's gonna differentiate this series is I'm gonna actually be walking you through my next project that I'll be working on. So you'll be with me every step of the way, all the way from the ideation phase, choreographing the fight, the actual production, post-production, editing, and then all the way to publishing. And that way, I think that'll give you guys more of a unique glimpse into what it takes to create sprite animation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the first step that is needed to know what it takes to create sprite animations. What programs do you use? So starting with the first program, this is where the magic happens. You're going to need Adobe Animate. That is going to be where all the work happens. I and mean, you can easily get Adobe Animate on the Adobe website. They have a whole bunch of plans and a whole bunch of different programs. For you guys case, more than likely you just wanna go ahead and just get the Adobe Animate by itself, which is a monthly subscription of $22.99, as it says right here. Now I do believe that they do have a free trial version as well. So if you know, you're not really sure you wanna to commit to it and you just wanna try it out, you're certainly more than welcome to go ahead and do that. Now, the next program that I use is Adobe Premiere. Now, this isn't really a necessary program, but you know, Adobe Premiere is a pretty good editing software. It's how I splice together all the scenes. That's how I add all the sound effects and you know, pretty much put everything together and then render it and publish it. Now you could still do all that and animate as well too. The only reason why I tend to use Premiere is that I feel like it gives you a little bit more control of certain editing aspects. You know, for starters, I wouldn't even worry about Premiere Pro. You, you'd probably be fine with like animate just to start with. Another program I tend to use is A Sprite. Now this, thankfully, great thing. You don't have to subscribe. You could buy this one time and you know, you you got it forever. You don't have to worry about it. This program is really good for if you need to say, maybe edit a sprite and do something that might not be available in the sprite sheet, but you're able to create your own custom sprite sheets. That's how I was able to create kind of like a custom walk cycle for Shao Kahn and also Akuma and the Akuma versus Shao Kahn series. But again, yep, you go ahead and buy and look at that, $20 one time and it is yours forever. And all these programs I'll also definitely kind of link in the description so you guys don't have to, you know, look too hard. <laughs> Now the final program that I use in my process is Fighter Factory. Now Fighter Factory is actually a program used to go hand in hand with this uh, 2D engine software known as Mugen. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with that. But for the purpose, this is actually how I tend to get a lot of my sprites. I and mean, I'll go ahead and dive more into that in the next session. And there is also another alternative way of getting and retrieving your sprites and I'll be showing that as well too. Now that we have our programs and we know what tools that we'll be using to create sprite animations, now for the fun part. What idea do you have? Who do you wanna see duke it out in fisty cuffs and, and just uh, me, ma, 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 ma. you know? Who do you, who do you wanna see ballot it out? Now, in terms of creating sprite animation and sprite fights, there's actually, honestly, almost no limit. Unfortunately, the only limit is whether your character has sprites out there available, which... <laughs> can be a downer sometimes because you might come up with a really cool crossover but like dang like I don't even have the sprites out here now when it comes to picking your idea my only suggestion and tip is to you know pick something that that you're interested in pick something that you you know that excites you who are your 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 favorite characters and who do you want to see you know fight like it's it's totally up to you there's no rules or no set limits or anything just you know create what you want to create create who you want to see fight now that you have your idea now is gone to the next step. How do you retrieve your sprites? 
Now there are two methods to retrieving the sprites for your chosen characters. For my case, the sprites I'll be looking for is Wolverine from the Marvel Universe and Albert Wesker from the Resident Evil series. And what's great is that both of these characters, in order for me to get their sprites, I'll have to do both of these methods. So this is actually works perfect. So the first method is to check out this website, Spriter's Resource. Spriter's Resource is a really good way for you to find all the sprite sheets needs. Um, I mean, like look at all the consoles. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and search our character, which is in my case, Wolverine, because I know that they have a um, sprite sheet from Marvel vs. Capcom, which will be the sprites that I'll be looking for. And boom, there we go. So we have a couple different Wolverines from different video games across the consoles. And this is the one that I was looking for, the one from Marvel vs. Capcom. And then boom, there you go. So you have all the animations, you have all his stances, you have his walk, you have his jump all the good stuff. So then what you want to do is go ahead and right click, save image as, I'm going to name this Wolverine, and then boom, there you go, you have it saved. Now method two, as I mentioned, that's this is the method that I tend to use mainly, which was using the program of Fighter Factory. Now the reason why I tend to use this method is because it makes the process a little bit quicker. Because I feel like the downside with working with the sprite sheets is that you'd have to go ahead and you know kind of like chop up the sprites and you know boom, pick them off and yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, if I can kind of shortcut certain processes, I definitely will. So with that said, what's going to lead us to use Fighter Factory is because this is what I was mentioning before. Unfortunately, certain characters aren't going to always have sprite sheets. And to my knowledge, I don't think there is any 2D sprites of Albert Wesker, but we'll go ahead and search that up. And yeah, so pretty sure this is from NVC3. These are just kind of like his portrait images can't really do nothing with that. Wolverine's not about to be fighting portraits. <laughs> so with that said, we're going to jump into my method of Fighter Factory. So as I said before, Fighter Factory is used for creating um, 2D fighting game characters. So what we need to do is look up these 2D fighting game characters. Um, and there are a couple of websites that you can go for that. My main websites that I like to go to is Mugen Archive, but there are also a plethora of other websites out there as well that you can explore like Infinity Mugen team, they actually have a lot of great characters here. Plus side of this method is that there are also like custom characters. So I mean, like, look at this, like you have your anime characters here, you have cartoon characters, Mr. Incredible, Elastigirl, Bender. This just kind of opens up a whole new world for crossover and character battles. So from the homepage here, we're gonna go ahead right over here, Mugen characters. And the great thing about this is it has it all organized from, you know, their different respective properties. So we got Capcom, SNK, um, characters even from like manga, comics, TV series, other characters. Other characters tend to be kind of like custom characters and so on and so forth. So we know Albert Wesker is from Capcom. So we're going to go over here to the subcategories and we're going to go to Resident Evil. And then so we have Leon Kennedy, we have Lady Dumitress. And yeah, so we're gonna look for Albert Wesker. Here we are, we got him right here. Boom, we're gonna go ahead and click that. Now, this website does require you to create an account in order to download the characters. Um, some of the characters you can download with that account, but it really depends on the file size of the characters. So be because this is a larger file size, 36 millibyte, megabytes, um, I do believe you'll probably have to create an account in order to download this specific character. Um, but I already have my character already downloaded, but you know, just for the purposes of you guys, we'll go ahead, click download, and boom, you have your character. Now, after you have your character downloaded, and assuming you have Fighter Factory already downloaded as well too, we're gonna go ahead and open up the program, which I have right here. So what you're gonna do, go to project, then go to open, and then you're gonna find the file wherever you download it, then you can click Albert Wesker, and then you want to open up this dev file. So the dev file is going to contain all the information for the character, you know, the palettes, the sprites, and all the animations. Usually it'll take you to this page, but you want to go up here. If you want to see the sprites, you're going to click right here. And then boom, you have all your sprites. Look at this. This, this is pretty good. Shout out to the, the creator who, who did this. They, they, did a, they did their thing with this. So now, that you have your sprites, 
you want to go ahead and click save one or more go to your your respective folder that you want to save it at so then i'm going to name this albert wesker go ahead hit save and then this little window is going to show up so it has this highlighted so it's going to save whatever is highlighted so in this case it's going to save just this image because that's the one that we have highlighted that we clicked save but what i'm going to do is go ahead and select all and then we're going to go ahead and okay it and what it's going to do is going to go ahead and save all of the sprites so then now when you go to the folder boom you have all your sprites saved you have all your attacks all the jumps all the runs all the hit stuns there you go we have our characters let's let's get to battling also want to point out this program is also great for retrieving your background sprites you can also look up stages as well too from that same website so going back to Mugen archive we're gonna go ahead and go back to downloads so you have your characters and then boom you have your stages um and again and then the same thing with uh the characters Sometimes you'll have uh, custom characters, but you'll also have custom stages. So the same thing would apply. Go to your sprites here, do the same thing. You'll go ahead and save. Go ahead and name this bell tower. Again, make sure you select all. That's very important. Hit okay. And it's gonna save all your sprites. And then now if we go back to our folder where we saved all of our sprite, there we go. So we have like our stage element. And then there you go. Now that we have our character sprites, we have everything that we need to go ahead and create our animations. Now the next thing we have to do is plan out our animation. Now for this, I tend to kind of like create like a Google Doc. So that way I can kind of like write out my ideas for the project um that way i know you know what i'm planning on doing so essentially i just kind of create like a simple document like this um you know it doesn't have to look like this so we have our title here wolverine versus albert wesker runtime i'm just a rough estimate not really sure because i also haven't choreographed the fight just yet for this project i'm probably not going to do like a whole entire series or anything just like a one-off fight just you know something short 1v1 crossover so we have our production details wolverine albert wesker stage where we're going to take place umbrella facility themes Hill helix origin and then your story now you don't necessarily have to have a story for your fight i know some people kind of like you know like to do fights just just for the sake of fighting just just you know they just duking it out they boxing and that's okay um, for me, I tend to kind of like lean towards a story. Having a story to your fight or having a reason to why these characters are going to fight, I feel like I'm going to add like a level of death to your animation. Death, not death, death. <laughs> death to your animation, um, you know, which will make it more immersive um, and give your audiences more um, context and, you know, maybe even get them to root for a certain character. Besides, you know, of course, rooting for their favorites, but, you know, they see the character motivations maybe it'll kind of get them to, to root for another character so with that then next we have our fight outline so this is essentially the space that i do to kind of like break the fight down into parts so actually what i'm going to do is show you the production document i did for shao Kahn versus um akuma so here is a more completed document so as we move on to the fight outline this is actually one way so sometimes I might choreograph the fight to hit certain notes um, of the song. So like I'll have like timestamps and then from that um, point to that point, this is what I want to happen here. And then from this point to this point, this is what I want to happen here. So this is one way I tend to do it sometimes if, you know, that's the direction I want to go. Or also I might just, just straight out choreograph the whole fight just writing it out so in the case of round three that's what I did and this is where getting kind of like familiar with your character's movesets kind of comes in handy that way like you kind of like know what your character does their abilities and all that and then you can kind of like get creative with it so you know I'll kind of like write it out and then just kind of like just let it keep flowing and flowing and flowing and then other alternatives or ways that I tend to do is kind of like draw like thumbnails of the fight as well so I can actually like see it come together and that tends to be the way that you would typically do like animation you start with like thumbnails or storyboards so you can actually like see what it uh you know looks like or how it's potentially gonna look like yeah that's pretty much how i tend to choreograph my fights um i know that's kind of a general look
look at it and I mean I could go more in depth with it but for the sake of the video and just you know getting you guys all set up I didn't want to you know go too deeply and heavy into it if that is something that you guys would like me to dive into a little bit more I'm more than willing to definitely make another video um, kind of diving into like my mindset and how I go about choreographing my fights so let's see reviewing everything that we went through we went ahead and took a look at what programs are needed in order to create sprite animations again for you guys cases in order to like you know just begin i will recommend just sticking with adobe animate and fighter factory adobe animate is the only program that you would have to like really pay for and then fighter factory it's free all the other stuff you do have to pay just starting out like if you don't really want to invest that much that's okay so I think you'll be pretty much okay to get by with just Adobe Animate and Fighter Factory. Maybe down the line if you want to invest in other programs as well to kind of get more compl uh, complex with your production, but Adobe Animate by itself, you good. You good. Next we cover, you know, what's your idea, who you want to fight. Again, pick whoever you want, pick whoever you're interested in, it doesn't matter, sky's the limit except for you know whether your character actually exists in sprite form that's the only downside but other than that go crazy with it next we cover how to retrieve your characters which was method one which was looking up the sprite sheet of your character saving it and working off the sprite sheets there's actually a great video out there that i will definitely recommend you guys check out if you want to use that method it's not the method that i tend to use so i feel like it's kind of hard for me to kind of walk you through that but this is a great video for you guys to learn how to work with this method and then there's also the alternative method, which is working with Fighter Factory in order to look up your characters already created in, in the, uh, the Mugen format and then downloading it and exporting your sprites. And then finally, we covered how to plan your animation, which is, you know, getting your ideas out on the paper. So that way you can kind of, you know, work off of a document, know what you're going to do going forward. I recommend this method only because it eliminates a lot of, you know, trying to, you know, work on the fly. Some people tend to work, you know, as they go and kind of like freestyle it and figure it out as they go, as they're animating. Um, if that works for you, that's awesome. More power to you. But I know in my experience, I feel like it leaves a lot of room for creative blocks. You might be working on a project and then as you go, you might end up hitting a moment where it's like, okay, uh, you know, what do I do next? And then next thing you know it, you're stuck on this one section you can't figure out where to go and it just lengthens the creative process eventually something probably comes to you and you, you know what you want to do but always going to recommend having your ideas pre-made know what you're going to do before you even jump into production it makes the production that much quicker it helps you not to drag with the project and you know get it done so animation is a tedious and it's it, it takes a lot of time so anything to kind of help cut down on that process and you know help you to not linger on a project for too long because you know eventually you're gonna not get motivated or you're gonna get bored with the project so anything to kind of help you hurry up and get through that project is gonna be a great strength in the long run and there you have it you're one step closer to creating your very first sprite animation you have everything that you need and then the next entry of this video series, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the fun part, which is the actual production where I'll be walking you through the project itself. And yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. With that said, I wanna thank you guys so much for your time and thank you for checking out the video. And I hope this video was informative and it kind of helps you to, you know, see that it is possible to create sprite animations and it's encouraging and inspiring for you to just go for it and just, just create just create with that said if you enjoyed the video if you found it was informative inspirational feel free to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss the next entry of this tutorial series and feel free to check out some of my other animations on the channel as well if you need a little bit more inspiration as well and also feel free to let me know down below if there's maybe like a step that was a little bit shaky or something that you actually want me to dive in a little bit more i'm more than willing to make a video on certain topics such as choreographing the fights um, anything and everything that you can think of. With that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video.